It's another special edition of the Burn Island Show. Thanks for watching and listening. And today is exciting. Uh, we are talking NBC Chicago Med. We've had a lot of PD cast. We've had a lot of fire cast. This is our very first Med cast, hopefully the first of many. Um, and we are talking with uh, acting veteran legend Stephen Weber about Chicago Med. Stephen Seven he plays Dr. Dean Archer, but uh, he's done a lot of other amazing projects. Uh, Steve, thanks for hanging out with us today. I appreciate it. A pleasure. I'm 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 glad to be the first of what I hope is going to be years of Chicago Med interviews for you. Yeah, I hope so. Well, just as a side note, we had your pal uh, uh, on just recently, uh, who is in uh, the HBO series The Laker Show. I, his name is oh, Spencer, Spencer, Spencer Garrett. Spencer Garrett. Yes. So um, he says hi. <laughs> it was funny because we were talking after the conversation. It's like, hey, have you ever had so and so on? I'm like, yeah, we're working on it right now. So here we are. Um, Spencer's a great guy, and he's he's like an old fashioned character actor, the kind that I always, you know, we all aspire to be. He, he and in fact, in the HBO show, he's playing, you know, Chick uh, Chick Hearn. Yeah, makeup. He he's 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 this uh, changeling of an actor. He's really a great yes. guy. He really, yeah, is. he embodies it very well. Well, this is awesome. Uh, again, as I mentioned, uh, you play Dr. Dean Archer, and Chicago Med is in its seventh season, which is this show has been on for a very long time. Let's talk about your entrance into the show because you showed up, and I think a lot of fans were excited because, like a lot of these shows, they always like to shake things up <laughs> when you don't expect it. Yeah. So let's talk a little bit about your character because it's been interesting watching this unfold. Uh, and uh, sort of the genesis of how this all came about. Um, when I was first approached and uh, with the possibility of playing this guy, uh, it was clear that he had a history that I was um, somewhat connected to personally and uh, very interested in playing. He was a Navy veteran, he's a surgeon who uh, suffered from PTSD. And the reason why I'm connected to it is because I... I work with this wonderful organization called New Directions for Veterans, and they help vets get back on their feet after, you know, after years of serving our country. And also my dad had PTSD. He was a Korean War veteran. And I realized many years later, in fact, after I started working with the organization, that he had all the, um, all the characteristics of somebody who was terribly traumatized by his wartime experience. Dr. Dean Archer is uh, similar to him in many ways. He lots of anger issues, lots of deep-seated uh, uh, trauma that um, Chicago Med actually explored in the earlier, uh, I guess, last year, um, yeah. last season. And um, and in many ways, uh, to address your question about how he's evolved, I think they've backed off a little bit from from showing that and that's fine <laughs> you know because he's uh, he's a guy that's able to work and live and um uh, in this at Gaffney and uh in the hospital area he's incredibly uh adept and good at what he does but he still has issues he's not very sociable he's occasionally <laughs> no friendly. he's very brusque and you know, I, I guess I guess there's room for a character like this in that world. Um, and in fact, um, when I've spoken to people who are medical professionals, they actually say that he's actually closer to what the norm is in that landscape than the incredibly beautiful, handsome, altruistic people who are all kind of gorgeous and perfect and lovely and compelling, uh, as as they are written on the show. The reality is that they're human beings and they get ticked off and they uh, are not always pleasant to be around. And he kind of embodies that. I think I think he's been a real asset uh, for the show because of that very reason. You know, he gives gives the other characters something to bump against. Yes, I would say that to be very true, because, you know, we've again, as you mentioned, seen so many different layers of him so far. And to be honest, like one of the most difficult characters, at least for me, to kind of figure out where he lands, because we find ourselves rooting for him on a lot of different levels because of what the, that area needs and what the experience that he brings. But then it's kind of like, 
where is he going? So I love that thumbnail sketch of the character because it helps me understand a little bit yeah. kind of where he's coming from. And yeah, I, I do remember them exploring that last season. That was intense. And you had like what seemed to be a breakthrough moment with your character. Yeah. And now the dust has settled a little bit and he's just running things on a normal day to day operation from what we can see so far. Yeah. I mean, he's the type of guy that is really good at his job and he actually does care about people and his patients, but he also has a habit of stepping in it, uh, stepping in some, you know, manure. And <laughs> last year they had him doing a couple of unsavory things, uh, you know, pulling out the random liver and, uh, you know, doping people, you know, stuff like that. You know, uh, stuff like that. Yeah, you know, I mean, it almost seems like a dream because his, the character has evolved in a way I like to think um, almost the way, uh, and I'm in no way comparing myself to him or the show or the character in any way, but the young Spock, if you look at the original series, Star Trek, the original series, which I'm a huge nerd about, you know, Spock in the early days was very big. Occasionally he'd smile. He'd be, he was loud and he, it took him a while and the writers a while to kind of get this character where in, in his sweet spot. And I feel like hopefully um, that's where they're bringing Dean Archer. You know, he's a guy who's got a lot of issues as most human beings do. And he's not always charming. In fact, <laughs> he's ever charming. Uh, and that's the way it goes with this guy. And there's, you know, these folks are out there and uh, it's good that they show him. We we love him. He's just a lot of fun to watch. We love him. I don't think people, you know, I, I made the mistake of, of reading some board where. Uh, oh, no. Here we yeah, go. You know, and people hate this goddamn guy. They hate him. And yeah. That's, okay. that's all right. That's OK. Well, you know, not every character has to be beloved. But right. I, I think, you know, he balances everything else that's happening on the show. Yeah. And I think that's really what matters with this character. And a lot of the other characters that you've played is kind of get a good mix of things and you know i think we're all kind of waiting to see sort of what happens between him and ethan and sort of yeah. how that's all going to play out you know no spoilers but really what where that's going to wind up you know what i'm saying yeah um and uh it's just a lot of fun and again the show has just been met with such success along with all these others and I'm excited. Uh, this week's episode, I haven't seen yet, so I'm excited to kind of check it out and see where we land uh, with uh, everything that's happening from last issues. week. It's a killer. It's, it's, it's yeah. a good one. Yeah, I'm excited. Well, you've, you've just been a part of a lot of so many things, and we'll talk about some of your earlier projects, but I'm curious, um, you know, because you got quite an early start with your career. You did theater and then a few pictures, and then, of course, Wings came about which that ran for seven seasons as well. But when were you bitten by the acting bug and knew that you wanted to be a storyteller? Well, I was bitten by the acting bug when I was a really young person, uh, probably in the third grade and fourth grade. Uh, I didn't consider myself a, a storyteller. I was just getting waves of affirmation from an audience who were responding to me. Invariably, when I ad libbed or made a joke, and so for uh, on stage, and so from that moment on, I guess I was addicted to it. Um, I began to take it more seriously in high school. I went to the high school of performing arts uh, in New York City. And then after that, I went to a great theater school called Purchase in Purchase, New York, where there was a lot of great actors from Edie Falco to Ving Rhames to Stanley Tucci to, you know, great filmmakers, great actors, a lot of actors come out of that school and, um, and started doing theater from there. So I really got bit young, a bit by the bug young. I watched a lot of television, a lot of old movies and, and just fell in love with the whole idea of possibly doing this professionally. I mean, I didn't have any big uh, goals about, being a, a star or any of that stuff. Uh, I just love the idea of maybe being a character actor, like uh, we were talking about earlier about Spencer Garrett, you know, that type yeah. of actor. And who goes from job to job. I, I loved the uh, the kind of brick and mortar aspect of it. I like the idea of the kind of a lay, uh, the um, the journeyman actor, believe yeah. it, you know, and uh, that that's what most 
uh, intrigued me, and I, and I was very lucky. I was able to to land jobs early. Yeah, we had um, Steve Gutenberg on last week, and he said something very similar in the fact of you know he just really loves the the nuts and bolts of the business. Yeah, showing up to set, you know, bringing those positive vibrations, and really when he's on a set, he's at his best, and he hopes that that influences people around him to be at their best and mm -hmm. to just really, you know, you're there to work. And he considers himself a character actor, even though he's yeah. had different roles here and there. Um, I think both of you were on ballers on HBO that's at right. one point. Yeah. So um, and that's great. So you did some films, you did Flamingo kid. Yeah. Um, and then of course, as the world turns hamburger Hill, and you yeah. went on to Broadway was wings where things really like no pun intended kind of took off for you, so to speak, and really kind of put you on the map as far as what you were doing, or was it other things that led to that? I mean, obviously it had, it was the kind of biggest show project that I'd been involved with. It garnered the most attention and most publicity. It was, it was firmly nestled in the, you know, the NBC bosom in a way, you know, in yeah. the movies. and when they had they had firm control of the of, of people's viewing habits back then with yes. shows like cheers and friends and seinfeld and er and you know dozens dozens of shows that people made appointments to watch uh, wings being one of them i think it was a real utility show i call it wings because it wasn't as sexy it wasn't as edgy but it was a, a crowd favorite and it still remains um, uh, well liked today. So yeah, being part of the network machine, uh, especially in those days, I got a huge boost uh, professionally, but I still uh, consider myself a kind of a character actor, uh, uh, you know, and, and, and pursued that path almost uh, not in spite of, but along with all the kind of, very shiny, glitzy network promotion that they th that one always had at that time. Yeah, it was a great show. In fact, when this whole thing started, the pandemic two years ago, I think I was looking for things to binge, and I actually went through all seven seasons because yeah. uh, it was such a good show. You know, watching it and things like that. And I was just looking at the cast of that show: Tony Shalhoub, uh, yeah. Thomas Hayden Church, Tim Daly. There's a huge, a lot of people in that show uh, that were just kind of, you know, I don't know if they were at the start of their career necessarily, but really were getting that public recommend right. recognition, you know, as far as being on network television. No, I, I, they weren't at the start of their career, but they were, abs they were obviously in, in early chapters of it. Um, uh, you know, Tim had already made Diner. Uh, Tony yeah, I forgot Hugh about that. Was was making films, and he was absolutely garnering a great a, a reputation. And um, uh, as as a as a go to brilliant character actor, I think you know he'd made a couple of films where he'd gotten a lot of notice. Um, uh, and and Tom Church was, I mean, pretty much at the start of his career, um, but he had already uh, started people talking about him because he he actually got the job, I think, on Wings because he made this great cameo on Cheers. Yes. So, um, so yeah, we were at early, early stages. Um, I, I think it's safe to say that even if none of us had gotten wings that we would have found, we were, we were on a, an upwards trajectory and we were doing a lot of stuff I'd been doing. I was starting to do some, like you say, films and, and some TV appearances, but yeah, wings was really the, the place where we all landed and uh and 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 got a lot out of it i mean we all learned a lot and we made some good money and uh got a lot of experience and people met us as actors and as characters yes oh yeah great times and again that period of television you mentioned making appointments my parents would set the vcr for those watching and listening who don't know what that is it's like a dvr but it's in the what? cloud. DVR? What are you talking about, old man? Old <laughs> guy? Yeah. I know. 47. I'm, oh. Yeah. It, you're, uh, you're almost dead. Yeah, I know. I feel that way. Well, I have a seven-year-old who's about to show up here in about 20 minutes. So right. 
And I know you're very busy. You just got off a plane. But one last question. I know you're a father as well. Do your children show any interest in what you do? Or are they just kind of like dad on TV? Or do they get it? I mean, kind of where do they land with it all? There's another wings pun, by the way. Yeah, <laughs> I know. Okay, stop it. Um, <laughs> uh, they're 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 outwardly unimpressed and that's absolutely fine i think they're amused and i think they are possibly a little proud that i have have managed to make a living in a in an industry where that's very hard to do uh i think they're amused they're amused when somebody recognizes me they're shocked when somebody in their demographic recognizes me because i did some I did a show called 13 Reasons Why, which is basically yeah. their demographic. And uh, and sometimes they get approached by people. Hey, I saw your dad on that. That's a terrible imitation. Hey, I saw your dad on TV. And they they own it. They're not ashamed of it, but they never they they never um, celebrate me to my face. They they you know they they put down the old man. It's all right, I understand. <laughs> I love it. That's great. Well, again, folks, we've been chatting with actor Steven Weber. It was a part of Chicago Med. Uh, he plays Dr. Dean Archer, and it airs on Wednesdays on NBC. If you haven't watched it, please catch up streaming. It's free. Uh, with I think it might even be on Netflix, maybe not, or Hulu, one of these streamers. But uh, And if you're really looking for fun, uh, be sure to check out all the other great work. And Wings was a great show mm -hmm. uh, in the golden age of just fun network comedy. Stephen, thanks for your time today. I appreciate Pleasure. it. Thank you very much.